pow, you've just been sucker punched by life. Everything was going great, and now you're on the floor reeling. As you try to get a grasp of your situation, you can see that it's not ideal. You begin to ask yourself, why me? What did I do? Why didn't I see this coming? While you may not know how to proceed, you do know one thing, that you have to do something. Let's go. This video will include proactive ways to prepare and reactive ways to respond to these types of situations. Disclaimer, not a doctor. I can't really help you emotionally. Uh, besides, everybody reacts differently. But what I can do is give you some ideas on how to deal with these situations from a financial and planning standpoint. Dealing with job loss or unemployment can be very challenging. One of the first things that you can do to prepare is having an emergency fund, which should cover roughly three to six months worth of expenses while you get back on your feet. For a more in-depth explanation on emergency funds, I have linked a video that I made down in the description and also on the side. Another proactive approach to take is networking. So unfortunately in today's society, it's who you know, not what you know. So there's a lot of qualified candidates that are passed over because there's other people that are more connected and trusted. So go to networking events, connect with people on LinkedIn, talk to old colleagues, go to happy hour. Do all of these things you can to really connect with other people in your workforce so that when you do need them, they'll be there for you. Now in the aftermath, the first thing that you should do is file for unemployment. This may be a pride issue and I get it, but unfortunately you have mouths to feed and bills to pay. So this temporary financial assistance can help a lot. Also, the emergency fund may not be able to cover all of your expenses. So having both of these things at the same time can help a lot. You will also need to review your finances and figure out areas where you have to cut back temporarily. Now, if you have a budget in place already, this can make this process significantly easier, but regardless, this is an equally important step. Lastly, update your resume and work on your LinkedIn. Now is the time to leverage your sphere. So reach out to old colleagues and try to use those relationships you've worked so hard to build up. But overall, stay positive and keep applying. Another major blow could be the death of a family member or a spouse. So having an emergency fund in this situation can be very helpful. In the case of a spouse, you may be losing a large source of income. So having money set aside can be very helpful in the meantime. Proper life insurance can also have a monumental effect. Depending on your plan, you can get hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars in an instant to help you deal with your bills and also sudden expenses. Designating beneficiaries and having a will is also equally important. The second you have assets and kids, you will need to write these documents out and have them in place because not having them could potentially lead to future family feuds and also probate, which is a nightmare. For those wondering, probate in short means the deceased person did not have a will. As such, the state steps in and it goes to court. Assets are then distributed to heirs who have no say in the process. Overall, this process can take months to even years, and it is common afterwards for heirs to sue each other for assets they felt that they deserved. So yeah, it gets very messy, and it can all be solved by just having a will. Exercise and regular health checks should also be considered. Now, doing some form of exercise consistently can be very helpful, but also research to see if your family has any reoccurring health issues, like cancer or heart disease. After such an unfortunate situation, you obviously need to take time to grieve. We get that. But in a timely manner, you still need to let your financial institutions know of your situation so that their records can be kept up to date and also so that fraud cannot be taken place in the deceased person's name. Now would be a good time to access those life insurance policies you put in place all those years ago and use those funds for your current expenses. Likewise, reaching out to professionals in the space could be very helpful. So your financial advisor, estate planners, and maybe your accountant, because making these decisions by yourself can be challenging. Another thing to consider is also cutting back on your budget and also finding new alternative sources of income. Lastly, figure out your funeral plans. Now this can be considered morbid, but you should really do this beforehand. Also keep in mind that funerals can be expensive from a few thousand to even 10,000 or more. Divorce or separation is another emotional and financially taxing situation. It is common for couples to have a joint bank account and also individual ones. It will be up to you two to determine the amounts you can deposit in each and what the money can be spent on. Having an individual account is also very important because it is your money, but also so that you have some sort of independence and privacy. Another thing to consider is getting a prenup, which is becoming more popular in today's age. In short, a prenup is about the ownership of all respective assets should the marriage fail. So basically you write out everything you own and who owns them. Lastly, you will need to know and understand the rights and obligations that you have. 
So research family law in your state and see what you can and can't do. The law will protect you if you abide by it, but act foolishly and it can hurt you. Now, after the fact, you're going to need to find yourself a good lawyer. Depending on your state, you might have different laws about the separation of assets. There is what's called separate property and marital property. Separate property is the property you own before marriage. So let's say your childhood baseball collection. And marital, also known as community property, is what you bought during the marriage. So let's say the house that you currently live in together. Also, pension plans and retirement accounts are considered marital. So whatever you earned in those accounts during the marriage can be divided. You may have to pay alimony or child support to your former spouse. Likewise, if you do have kids, you're going to have to figure out child custody because divorces can be very, divorces can have a very big impact on kids, especially when they're young. So you have to do right by them, not just yourself. Now, regardless of any situation, having basic health insurance and car insurance is crucial. Anything can happen, so you need to be protected for the worse. I plan to do a part two to this video as there's many things that could hurt us mentally, emotionally, and physically that we should plan financially for. So if you have any things you want me to talk about, put them in the comments down below. And until then, I'm Evan, and thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, then click on the video here. Also, if you haven't, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos.